Boy, Sam, I thought we were going to get an encore there. <laughs> but I don't know whether my heart could have taken it. Um, if you're ever up at Fort Warden in Port Townsend and you go up on the cliffs, you will find some black plants. With uh, have any of you seen those with with Sam's poems? Yeah. It's astonishing because you're standing in the very place where you know he's seen the osprey. Uh, it's extraordinary. Um, I mean, you know, if any of us you know are worried about um, line envy, I think we had a ton of line envy there. I well, I, I shouldn't speak for you guys. I should speak for me. Um, let me be water. The heart pour out in waves. Fish, rain, stone, I can't know them, but I know them all the same. And, and for all the poets in the audience, each thing closely seen, seen more strange than before. And isn't that what paying attention is? Sam Hamill, thank you. And Sam, a year ago, was honored in the New York Times by his friend, I, I'm assuming that this is his friend, Martin um, Espada, who, who wrote um, a wonderful poem in honor um, of Sam because of the difference poetry made really in, in saving Sam's life, I think, is really what Martin's um, poem is. I just want to quote this. This is blasphemy for Sam Hamill. It's just an excerpt. Let the blasphemy be spoken. Poetry can save us. Not the way a fisherman pulls the drowning swimmer into his boat. Not the way Jesus, between screams, promised life everlasting to the thief crucified beside him on the hill but salvation nonetheless. Somewhere a convict sobs into a book of poems from the prison library, and I know why his hands are careful not to break the brittle pages. That poem is dedicated to you, Sam. Thank you. So what a wonderful way to start. We now have six other extraordinary poets um, to hear tonight. And they're each going to share about 10 minutes. Um, we're going to give them a little latitude. So after, after 12 minutes, I've said that, that if they do that, they're going to be in danger because I will go, Naha! <laughs> <laughs> Which is better than a ringer, but I, I know I'm not going to have to do that. Um, so it is really with um, great pleasure that um, I want to introduce Yvonne Blomer, who is not a stranger to any in this part of Cascadia poetry circles. Um, born in Zimbabwe, educated at least partially in the UK, uh, poet, obviously, three full-length collections, two chapbooks, editor of the wonderful collection Poems from Planet Earth, um, and she is the MC and artistic director extraordinaire for the uh, Planet Earth Poetry Reading Series. If you ever find yourself with nothing to do on a Friday night in Victoria, head over to that series, and you're likely to see her there. And this, isn't, this is one person. You might think this is like seven people. No, this is one person. And because of that, she was recently appointed the uh, Poet Laureate uh, of, of Victoria. Her poems are anchored in her celebration of this one earth. But man, her poems still know how to fly. In her latest collection, As If a Raven, published last year, Yvonne writes, to live in these two worlds, whether held to earth, and all it demands, or to flight. She does both so well. Please welcome Yvonne Bloomer, the Poet Laureate of Victoria. That was a stunning introduction. Thank you. I'm totally shaking from head to toe from Sam's reading. So, arigato uh, I lived in Japan, so I can, I can thank you in Japanese family for that. As if a raven. At the end of 40 days, Noah opened the window on the ark which he had made and sent forth a raven. Something in the name Raven makes you think hot, dried, blood, black, red. Why would anyone trust this bird to come back and not flap its crooked wings in the new wild earth, making mountains where none were and monsters? You want to hear its call 
Know that something, in fact, is out there, powerful enough. A totem to sky and rain and water that could harness this bird and call it back. It calling you back, raven, raving, ravenous. That's the title poem of my collection, As If a Raven. And it's a collection that explores um, creation and destruction through the Judeo-Christian mythology, as well as other mythologies. And in the Raven poem, not only the, the biblical story, but also a little bit of First Nations, because how can you have a raven without a little bit of First Nations mythology coming in? Undoing. This starts with a quote from Job. Then the Lord said to Satan, So be it, he is in your hands, but spare his life. Job. The canal centered cormorant, suspended there, and just now buoyant on some pogo-like stick. The black sorrow of it whose wings have de-evolved to scales. It's like the nightmare, cells breaking back up, tissue making air of itself. The plump stone staying nonetheless and quiet in your belly. Back arching the weight of stone, the undoing. It perches, Feathers become nails or scales of flaking skin, and the, fall, the fowl falls in. Cold, that womb of water. Cold, the old amphibian blood and thin. Nebuchadnezzar among the ruins of Babylon. And this poem was inspired by an article in The Guardian, um, titled Babylon Cultural Vandalism. Anchor yourself to that sharp-winged silhouette blanking out the sun. A coarse cry rings, a portent. In the sky, the machine's blades cut air. Their shape, the filigree that was your crown, but now Humanity holds the rocks that shatters your clay feet. Man was made from dirt, and to dirt returns what he made. History in the face of this eager call. The peregrine's profile shattering what has already come. Still life with blackbird on lilac branch. Listen to those blackbirds, gods of the slick sun, their voices a thick rolling on the tongue. Listen to them crinkle and croon, call out the fields, the blue, puffed up blooms, the eccentricity of humans. There is origin and orgasm in that trill chorto. Heart ring, heart beat, the finger-picked song of the body letting go, leaping to something as thin, as thick as air. Uh, many bird watchers adore Audubon for his illustrations. Audubon, still life. And this begins with a quote from the Everglades Digital Library. His technique consisted of shooting as many birds of the same species as possible so that he could use them as models for his life-size paintings. Audubon, still life. What was nest has been skimmed for bone structure, feather luster, feathers, beaks, fine boned wings, things that have gone missing from trees. Children will not scream, will study the pretty birds unflown. Not feasted on by fox or hound, no, consumed by eye, 
finger, palette, and brush, to capture with rigor death, consumed by eye, finger, palette, and brush, not feasted on by fox or hound, no, the pretty birds unflown. Children will not scream, will study things that have gone missing from trees, feathers, beaks, fine boned wings, for bone structure, feather luster, what was nest has been skinned. I'm going to finish with a new poem. Uh, poetry Month was April, and uh, I created an event at the Art Gallery of Greater Victoria where eight poets responded to eight phot photographers' work. And my photographer was Krista Bell Stewart, who's a First Nations woman from the Okanagan. And her photograph is titled $10,000 Portrait. She took part in a photo camp in New York State to learn tin type printing, an old fashioned style of creating photographs. And um, the organizer of the camp create, sets the camp in the time of tin type. So he had lots of costumes and things, and uh, he asked her to put on a First Nations costume and took a picture of her and was really excited that she was a real Native American. <laughs> and as it was in the developing tray, he said, This could be a $10,000 portrait. And she took a photo of the photo in the developing tray. And this is my response to looking at her photo. Looking at a photograph of you. Unframed, I speak to your digital snapshot. Taken at John Coffer's old school tintype camp. A party, the wooden wagon and wanted posters, everyone's shooting in black and white, cowboys and there's nowhere to go with this. Thanks a lot, Columbus. <laughs> if you have costumes, put a woman in one, this get up. If she's a real native, put a price tag on her. I see when I lean in, how I lean in, see how you hold dry stalks of corn, how there is something too pliant in the young leather, if only instead hard wood armor. You are from the upper Nicola band of the Okanagan, peach from peaches on the highway, 10 bucks a box. If anyone called you or me peach, a highway of tears. If a highway of tears, how poetry too out of brute force. Blonde I am, by British forebears. If instead of corn you held a child, instead of corn a weapon. I would not condone murder, but those men pose with shotguns and what's embarrassed I look online, your traditional dress. Everyone in jeans and t-shirt. Everyone dressed like me. Sometimes a snapshot speaks within a frame. Though in your own tin type image taken at camp, beauty, I might say, if courage to. Self developed in self portrait, tree ringed, but homesteaded. Thank you very much. Thank you.